Well, hello, it's Shannon from Audio Energy, and today we're going to be looking at uh, something a little different. It's setting up mics um, for recording guitars and things like that. So uh, why don't we get into it? Okay, so um, this week we're going to be uh, looking at um, setting up microphones uh, for stereo recording and um, I've done a few blogs on uh, a recent website that I've joined called Steam It and if um, you're part of that community, hello, welcome, I'm Shan the Soundman, I call myself and um, done a few blogs there uh, just on your first steps to recording and we're up to the point where we're going to be looking at how to set up your mics for uh, doing um, uh, some stereo recording. So what's the difference between stereo recording and just regular recording? Well, with stereo recording we're using particular microphones. I'll take this off. These are my set of Rode 5 condenser pencil mics. That's what they look like there. And you may have seen these. Okay. Um, I've, I don't know if I put pictures up. I don't think I did. But uh, these are great little condenser mics. Uh, they're small diaphragm, uh, but they work really great. Uh, now, what I also have here, which really helps, this is called a stereo bar. There we are, Rode, yep, you can see Rode there. Rode or Rode, however you like to call it. Now, with the stereo bar, it basically screws onto the top of a mic pole. Okay, this is my mic pole. And I'll put this here so you can have a look. Now normally uh, what you would do with one regular mic is that you would have your mic in the, um, the mic stand and you would put it on here and just screw it in. Okay? And there, there's your mic, you know, you screw that on and off you go. But what the stereo bar does is allows you to place nice and steady um, specific arrangements for um, recording in a broader span like for guitar and instruments, pianos, even vocals if you want to. Um, and we use these because if you have a look at the front there, they have, uh, this is for people who aren't particularly sure, I'm going to explain what this means. Uh, there's a couple of different styles that you can do for stereo recording, okay? And basically, um, I'll get into those models very shortly, but when you first get this, um, you have your two little sort of two little posts. I'll pull this out a bit. There we are. You have your two little posts, and you can position these at certain points and at, aim them at certain degrees. It comes with two different size uh, input screws there um, to fit on this pole. I've had to take the inner piece out. You get a little inner piece like that, and uh, you can just use a, a flathead screwdriver or something like that to loosen it up. You don't want to put them in too tight because you're going to be moving them on and off all the time. And that actually screws inside there if you need it. So I can just screw that in. Um, and that fits in and screws in into that um, other little piece. Depending on what kind of um, screws that you have for placement. Now I need to take this out. I need to get it on here. So I'm going to sit this on top. Now, a quick way, or I should say a better way to get this on or any microphone for that fact, when you're putting the, um, the microphone clip onto these, it's actually easier if you um, loosen your bar, so here's our bar, and we're gonna sit that on top, and then you turn, I'm not turning this because it spins around and stuff, I'm actually screwing in from the base, okay? I'm screwing this, this long bar into the uh, the mic, there we are. And so I'm going to set this, um, move this over. I'm just going to tighten this here. And so there we are. We have our two mics ready to go. I'm going to put this one on. Now these screws are um, too small for the inside of that. So this is where these come in handy. You're, you don't want to lose these, you want to hold on to them. I'm going to screw this inside. So there's one mic that's ready to go, okay. I'll lower this down a little bit so we can see better. Here's the other one. 
And uh, you can see what's happening here is that we have our stereo bar. That's what this is called. It's called a microphone stereo bar. Okay. We have measurements along the back. I'll spin it around. You can have a closer look. You can see these are in centimeters along here. Um, there are distances. Not to you how you want to screw it in, but either way, there we are. Now you probably notice that they um, they don't look like they line up at first, but I'll show you how they work. So you want to use these ones at the bottom. We're using these screws here, and that allows us to make our placements. And we turn it around, and there's our stereo bar. Okay, and we have our mics. So now I'm going to put the mics in. It's very easy to set up. And we'll put our other one in. So there's our setup, nice and easy, ready to record. Okay, if we put these at two ends like this, this is our first arrangement, this is one arrangement you can have, and this is called a spaced pair. Okay, spaced pair. And it essentially means that, um, let's tighten this up. There we are. So now they're all tight. They're not moving anywhere. I can adjust them as I need to. That's locked in. This is a little lock. These come with the mics when you buy the M5 mic. Okay. And you can tighten them up and adjust them as you need them. Okay. And there we are there. Now this is a larger stand. If I had a guitar, I'd need a shorter stand. Okay, but I'm going to show you how they work. But this is a spaced pair or it's also called AB formation, okay? It's basically two mics. You wanna make sure that they are facing straight ahead and pretty much equally balanced, okay? So there's your space pair. Now, when you're recording, um, especially in guitar, if I pull this away, I'll probably move to about here. I, I, I can't go too far because this, um, let's see. When you're recording, I'll bring these in here, and you're recording onto a guitar, I'll take my mic off here. So that's where you want. You want these to uh, be further up the neck. So this one here would be at about the 12th fret, about here. This one here would probably come to up to about here. So you don't want to actually have too many microphones down over the hole. A lot of people think you actually have to put a microphone over the hole. It, it's actually not beneficial. It's not very good. You're actually going to get a lot of muddy sound um, coming out of the hole. Okay. Um, there's a lot of other places where you can put mics, but the best two, as I just mentioned, are here at the, around the 12th fret and up around the 5th fret, or if you have two separate um, microphone stands, you can actually space them a little bit further apart. So this brings me to my next placement, okay? The next one is called ORTF, O-R-T-F, okay? And it's based on um, basically the French radio recording uh, technique. Now, ORTF, it's, it's actually one I like, and it gives you a much wider span. You can put these, it depends where you put these, but I'm just going to move that around. Hopefully you can see that a little better. Okay, you can have these close, you can have them further apart, but either way, they have to be at um, 110 degrees. Okay, and on top you have, a, you have your measurement of 110 degrees, and you basically want them facing like this. This one there, and this one there. And they look like that, you can see from the side there. They're actually a little further apart. They're angled away from each other, but they're still about the same size. So the reason we're doing that is because it gives you a broader, wider sound, um, especially if you are up close to a guitar or a piano is always good. You can use it this way and over a piano. Um, because it's a cardioid polarity pattern around here, I've shown you cardioid before. Um, we have two cardioid spheres and there's a, a crossing point in the middle of these two about here uh, and they start to work together okay 
So if you have them too far apart, it's going to separate the field and all you're going to do is have two microphones that are recording. The stereo effect is not going to work. You're going to kind of lose that. You want that kind of goal area in the middle here to still be intact between the two, two fields. Okay. Um, if you put them way apart, like that, you put them way apart like this, it's really too far away and it's going to destroy the effect. You can, it can still work. I apologize for the light here. I don't know why it's giving me such a bad light. If you, you can put them far away, but that's about as far as you want to put them. Okay, so you can sort of see that. Um, and you also want to make sure, just have a look on top and make sure that they're sitting straight like that. Okay. So that's called ORTF. Okay, your ORTF. At 110 degrees, you still have enough field, but that's, that, that distance there is the ultimate distance. really starting to push it away. Okay. Um, but that's going to give you, look, if it's over a set of drums, fine. There's enough sort of sound coming out and generating out of that instrument. It just depends on the instrument. And um, the reason they've made it this far apart is because that's kind of where, but it is much better and you'll have a much better stereo effect when you keep the two tails. Because remember, you're going to have two XLR cables coming out the back here. And if you have them too close, they're going to sort of clash. But um, doing 110 degrees, they will bang into each other, so ultimately you'll probably have them about there, like that. Okay, you tighten the bolts at the bottom, and there you go. So that's your ORTF, O-R-T-F. Um, one of my favorites, because it does give a, great, a bit more expansive sound. Um, I've used this in a recording where I was doing surround sound uh, out in a field. I was doing a field project where um, I was recording some forestry, and uh, I had this at one end, and to get the surround sound effect, I had another single mic at the front, and I used two different types of mics. I used an Omni mic, which is um, like this one here, but um, the field, it means that the field is getting a 360 degree field all around the microphone. And I also used a figure of eight. Um, that means there is uh, one coming out this side and a field coming out that side. And so you have kind of slight dead zones uh, on either side, okay? But that's more about polarity, and we looked at that um, in the blog on Steemit. Um, so that was able to give me, I, I did a couple of different recordings <clears throat> in the forest um, using this technique, with the stereo bar, Autif, and um, the other microphone was probably about three metres away, facing the opposite direction. Uh, with Omni, and then I changed the head to a figure eight as well because the microphone allowed me to change those two sides. Um, the last one I'm going to show you is called XY. Okay, now this one's very, very popular. Uh, a lot of people like it because of the way that it kind of works um, with their sound field. And what it does is it actually brings the field uh, of the two mics much closer together, and you're going to actually have to have one, you have to be very particular about this, it's very important that you get this right. Okay. This is XY technique. Okay. It's uh, a 90 degree spread. Okay. So they're 90 degrees apart, but the, the two um, diaphragms of the microphone, if you want to call it that, Basically sit over the top. I'm going to bring this right in so you can have a look. And if you see, one is actually sitting over the top. There's a good angle there of the other. Okay. So if we spin it around this way. Okay. Now what that's doing is creating a center field of right around here uh, where they have a cross section between the two fields um, of your cardioid. So there's a very strong presence in the center, but you're also getting a lot of the, the cardioid effect uh, of the field on the outside as well. So you have these two cardioid fields that are really coming together uh, very strongly in the center. And like I said, you have to make sure that you have that right, okay? Because you could end up having phase issues. So one is literally sitting, um, well, what would you say, that is that 180 degrees opposite to the other, directly overhead. 
Okay, that is called XY. They're 90 degrees apart, um, but the heads are sitting over the top, and that will also give you a stereo effect because one is actually picking up the field from the front this side, and the other one the field that side, and there's some images in the center. Um, and you can see that each one is pointing in the opposite direction, uh, but like I said, you have that cross section in the middle. So there you go. Um, I won't go on too far with, with this, but when you're recording with an instrument, say a guitar, you know, you would have your, these would be, uh, Bring them back into the field. So here's my XY. Okay. That's probably a little bit there. There we are. So that'll be there. And if I was playing my guitar, I could probably have them sitting about here, and I'd have my guitar there. And I'll be playing. Okay. And so they're picking up the feet, their whole field is getting in this area. If I put it over the, I mean you can try and play over the hole but it's better if you actually have it a little up here because you're also going to get the sound of the hand on the string movement, you're going to get the hand, uh, the, the sound of the string sort of moving and being plucked nicely from this, this one here and this one over here is going to be getting more of the sound coming from the hole off axis. Okay, so technically they're both off axis from the center um, and that means it's away from the the direct center line, okay? I'll put that down there. So this one was a little bit awkward to make this video because I, I'm, I'm tethered to the, the, the iPad when I'm filming. Um, but I hope that's helped, okay? There's your three, you got your XY, 90 degrees axis. Um, you have your ORTF, O-R-T-F, and uh, they're 110 degrees apart and you have your space pair. Now each one has benefits. Um, each one has um, uh, their own kind of a stereo field. Like I said, I prefer the Autif over all of them. Space pair is good too. I use space pair quite a lot for guitar. Um, I use Autif for drums and overheads and things like that. Um, XY, uh, I'm, I don't know where I'd use it. Maybe, maybe a trumpet if you've got one kind of horns blowing straight in this direction, but you'd want it back a little bit. Um, uh, lots of opportunities. The best thing to do is experiment and try and see what works for you. Okay, um, but having this little this little um, stereo bar will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, when you take these off, once again, you can leave the whole system there, and then just loosen, and like I'm doing here, just turn this cable the rod, just unscrew the rod so it screws out of here and it just comes off. And so no point trying to spin this one around on the top. And so there we go, you can see it there's that's what it looks like there. Okay, that's what you want to achieve there. That's going to make sure that you have your phase right. Um, there's not going to be um, a collision, things falling out of time and things like that as well. Uh, on the top you can see that you have your Audif and your XY dimensions and explanations. Now this bar, um, it doesn't come with any of these, it just comes with the bar and uh, these pieces here. In Australia, I mean this is Rody, they're Rody mics, Rody that. I'm not an affiliate for Rode or anything, I just, or Rody, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I just like the gear, it's Australian, I support Australian for sure. Um, no problem there. These guys make great stuff, um, well worth looking into. You also get this little spare gold part as I mentioned, um, 50 bucks. That's what this stereo bar cost me. You can find cheaper ones on eBay, but if you get the right ones, you'll never go wrong. You can take this anyway. You can just put it in your little box. Um, I bought this box here that I carry my, you know, this one here. I got this from a, like a car hardware store. And uh, I carry my mics around in this. There's the inside. It's all nice foam. Uh, like that. So there it is there. I can do all that. I can record, um, put it all in my case. I can have everything I need and off I go and do, um, do my recording. So uh, that's just about everything I think I need to cover today. That's what I really wanted to look at. And um, one other little gadget that I'll show you as well. 
because I use iPad a fair bit, it's uh, just cheaper than buying 100,000 other types of cameras or spending too much money on cameras. This is a little iPad um, thing I got off um, eBay. Cost 10 bucks. Took a week to deliver. Probably could have got it quicker from somewhere else, but 10 bucks. And that can actually sit sit on here. Um, I just put it on there, mount it on, mount my iPad on this, and I can keep it nice and stable. So look, that's everything for now. Um, that's how we set up our mics. Um, from there, you would run those into your uh, into your um, sound card and start to record. You know, just depending. So the stereo bar gives you plenty of options to set up. Um, I think it's a great idea. It's a great invention as an audio engineer and recordist, and um, you're going to need that. Uh, especially if you're recording people live in the studio or if you have your own studio and you want to do your own recording, that's the way you go. So anyway, it's getting long. Um, I'll do a video on Steam it and want to think of that um, later for some people who watch my Audio Energy channel and don't know what Steam it is, I'll do something on that as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, stick to us, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.